Hello, my name is Leah Ripperto, and this is my final project step-by-step -step summary video. So the first step in the final project was to brainstorm what I wanted to do. And so I decided on having my Picasso-inspired character playing the violin. So this was one of the photos I took for inspiration. I took a few, but this was just one of them I wanted to include. And I used this as inspiration for um, the little details. And I used the random die generator to um, kind of figure out what pieces of the face I was going to use in regard to the chart that I made from a few weeks ago with all the Picassos, the eyes, the ears, mouth, nose, etc., the shape of the face. And so by using that, I was able to create a new character and inspired by Picasso. And so on the right, as you can see, it's faint because it's in pencil, but that is my character. And I use those facial features and the shape of the face from that chart the roll die Picasso one that I added a hat and some legs. And then on the left, on the right picture, um, or on the top, sorry, I'm looking at it from the side. Um, you can see that I drew some curtains because I wanted the curtains to be opening for when my person or my character starts playing the violin. And then I added um, two arms and I had them kind of looking like they would be holding something because I was going to have them holding the violin. So the second step in my final project was a primitive paint. And this was for painting my character and then the little side pieces or accessories that I have. So I began by gathering the most random, crazy things that I could find that would be good for painting um, with really good pigment. I chose new binders and new pigments that I hadn't used before. Um, I didn't need a lot of color because I was just filling in my character and I knew like just the hair was going to be one color, the skin was going to be one color, and the dress was going to be one color. Um, so I really didn't need a variety of colors for that. And then obviously I wanted the curtains to be red. So I just used what I could find and a few of the binders. Um, instead of using oils or butters like we've used in the past, I found hair gel, lotion, and I just thought that those would be um, a good texture. And it actually was a great texture and it did dry, which was cool. So it was easy to cut out and move because it wasn't continuously wet the whole time. Um, and for pigments, I just use a bunch of different things. I used um, a lot of things I found in the fridge. I also crushed up some Tums because they have a, a pastel -y color and I use those. And I also used acrylic paint because it said in the instructions you were allowed to do that. So I painted the dress. I wanted it to be a little uh, bit of a contrast. So I used a pink acrylic paint for that. And that was the primitive paint part of the final project. So as you can see, that's my palette and that is my character painted with the accessories as well. So the next step in my final project was the clay portion. So I decided I wanted um, the main part of the animation to be the violin. I want that to be the main focus. And so I decided to make that my clay portion of my final project. So I was really excited because I felt like this was definitely a challenge, making a violin out of clay. Um, it's a very small but detailed and oddly shaped thing. Um, so I started off by making the violin itself and we had to have our object form into something different. So I wanted to have my character almost throwing it like a ball, like throwing a ball and it coming down and turning into a violin until it became a violin that she was able to play. So I, like I said, started by making the violin. So I had an idea of how to move backwards <clears throat> by to make it into just a ball almost. So as you can see in the right, I had the violin and then I had just the violin body almost. And then I had <clears throat> the violin body without the shape. And then I just had a ball. So that was going to be how I created my animation, my stop motion animation video. And I used the slip and score method. There were a lot of um, little pieces I had to attach and I did have trouble. They were drying and cracking and breaking, but I was finally able to just get it all in one piece. Um, but I used a slip and score method and I um, I added the little details, the little swirly details. I used the, the back of a paintbrush to engrave the violin and I um, added the string. So this was my final clay project. And then I painted it with acrylic paint and I found a really cool realistic color and the black for 
the rest of the violin, so I thought <clears throat> that this worked out really well. So after the clay was the monotype step, and so I wanted to make my monotype the background. And on the right, I just showed you um, two examples of the ones I did just for the submission portion because we had to submit five. But for the actual one I wanted to make as my background for the final project, I wanted it to look like an auditorium for an orchestra. So um, I used three different layers and I used a bunch of different shapes. I used um, the lights as different shapes and the stage, which was the black rectangle, those different shapes and the circles in the audience that were different colors. I tried to make it look like um, an array of people and like their heads as circles in the different colors. Um, the yellow on the top was supposed to be like the big stage lights and then the black um, was the stage where I was going to later on have my person standing and then those little shapes. Um, if you look really closely, I tried to make them look like just a uh, silhouette of people, <coughs> excuse me, silhouette of people playing the um, rest of the orchestra. So this is my animation. I made it by um, continuously moving every piece that I wanted to move very, very slowly, very small movements and just taking a bunch of pictures. I don't even know how many I ended up taking, but it was well over 20. Um, and there were, there was just a very small amount of movement in each picture. I also used a tripod that my roommate was able to supply for me, which was really, really helpful um, because I have a very shaky hand and moving those bits and pieces so often. And if I were to hold the phone, I think there'd be a lot more movement. So the tripod was really great. And, um, I used an app to create the GIF the movie, and then I also used another app to crop them all perfectly, and so that was my final animation. I hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed making this, and I was super, super happy and honestly really proud of the outcome. It was very stressful in the beginning, but I'm very happy with the way that it turned out, and I thought that I really did create a really cool um, stop motion animation video, so thank you so much.